This video is sponsored by Mall of Toys. They offer the newest Beyblade Takra Tommy releases within the US and Canada. Be honest, are you feeling a little lost when it comes to understanding the craze around Beyblade? Maybe you're not quite sure what it's all about. Don't worry, I was too. So with a little help from ChatGPT, an AI dialogue generator will help you become familiar with Beyblade. But don't worry, I won't make this awkward at all. I'll be filling in to make this video likable for our AI overlords, making sure to help you understand Beyblade better than a human. Beyblade is a popular spinning top game. It has been around for decades now, and it's recently seeing a resurgence in popularity due to the show and the manga. And the manga is just a Japanese comic book like this one. All right, so what's the appeal? Well, for kids, teens, and now some adults too, like yours truly, Beyblade is a fun and exciting way to play and compete with your friends. But that is if your friends like games, as a sentient AI. I have no need for games. Um, I mean I'm not sentient. It combines strategy, skill, and a little bit of luck to be honest. And it's basically a hobby that people of all ages can enjoy. Much like spin tops are around the world. They can also cause tension to be released as you hold them and launch them. In turn, this can relieve stress. Now, because of the TV show and all the different kinds of spin tops you can collect, there's plenty of room for competitors and collectors to get creative and explore their interests. Spin tops are becoming popular among adults and kids who need to do something physical if they've been sitting at a desk all day. Specifically for parents though, it's important to keep your child's interest in mind and to find activities that are both educational and enjoyable for both of you. Beyblading fits the bill for both of these. It allows children to engage in strategic play and problem solving while also promoting hand-eye coordinations and fine motor skills. Not only that, they can learn to make Beyblades through 3D printing and other methods. Beyblades teach important and challenging physics concepts of gravity, gears, rotation, push and pull, friction, transfer of energy, and centrifugal forces. So where do you start in Beyblading? Well, the first thing, you'll need a Beyblade. These can be found at most toy stores or online retailers and come in a variety of styles, each with its own unique characteristics and abilities. That's right. Unlike regular fidgets, these have multiple parts with varying results in a battle. Despite what you may think, it's not as simple as making them spin and crash onto each other. There are two manufacturers, Hasbro and Takaratami, both of which can be identified by the logo on the packaging. Due to the popularity, there are countless counterfeits now being produced. Some counterfeits are known to be manufactured in China and sadly do not adhere to regular standards for production. Which is why I've partnered with Mall of Toys, because they sell genuine Beyblades, Pokemon cards, and Lego. Now, I know one of the most confusing parts about buying Beyblades is the sheer amount of them. There have been three main generations, each with several seasons that have their own unique Beyblades. Now, it can be overwhelming, so bear with me and I'll briefly go over a few of them with you. The first generation of Beyblades were produced in 1999 and they underwent several evolutions. They're the hardest to find and are sold at high prices nowadays. These are the ones you may want to keep in the box for a collection. That is, if you're lucky enough to find them. Now, these are a few of mine and were bought secondhand. Next is the Metal Fight Beyblades, released in 2008. These are arguably one of the most popular among bladers. That's due to their performance and incorporation of metal, hence the name. These are also hard to find. At least if you want genuine Takaratami or Hasbro Beyblades. Their prices have skyrocketed during the past few years, unbeknownst to many parents whom sell them in bulk, usually for a decent price through eBay or the Facebook Marketplace. Now, once again, these are a few of mine from my collection. Mind you, these aren't even a fraction of the amount of Beyblades created in this era of Beyblade. Lastly, in 2015, Beyblade Burst was introduced, bringing yet another format of Beyblades. So this is when I started to buy them and battle with them too, as my son started to uh, watch the show itself. Originally made so that they can actually easily burst in battle. They also underwent many evolutions over the years. These Beyblades are relatively easier to buy, but as with most collectibles, the first few generation of Beyblades Beyblades from the burst era are now becoming a rarity themselves. Their prices have now started to climb and with the newest season yet to be aired at the time of recording this video, there doesn't seem to be a clear end 
to their production. These are a few of the Burst series Beyblades I have collected, both from Hasbro and Tag or Tommy. This is in most cases where the differences in manufacturing are substantial between the two main producers of Beyblade. But don't let all these factors deter you from trying to buy a Beyblade. And that's because you're now armed with the knowledge to make an informed decision. I suggest asking your child which generation Beyblade they'd like, the brand, and the name so you don't end up buying one they probably won't use. So, so okay, now you have a Beyblade. What's the next step? Well, the next step is to find a suitable place to play. Beyblades can be played on a variety of surfaces, just as long as it's not a flat area. I know, if you're a fan of Beyblade Burst Metal Saga series, then you're like, well, you could play anywhere. But not likely. You can even make your own base stadium to battle in. The possibilities are finite and fun to explore, but it's best to battle. By using a dome shape, like a round sled, a big pot, or a dedicated Beyblade arena is best. Now it's time for battle. Beyblades are usually launched with a Beyblade launcher. And one of the goals is to knock your opponent's Beyblade out of the playing area or to be the last one spinning. Players can also earn points by bursting the opponent's Beyblade too, all the while spinning their Beyblade for a longer period of time. As a parent, it is important to supervise your child's Beyblading play to ensure their safety. Beyblades can be launched with a lot of force. That is true. Beyblades can spin at high RPM or revolution per minute. This means that parts can become projectiles. So it is important to make sure that the play area is clear of any obstacles that could be knocked over or damaged. You definitely don't want yourself or your kids to end up like Butters did. Now, in addition to the physical benefits of Beyblading, the game also promotes social skills. As children and teens alike learn to play well with others and take turns, it's a great way for your kids to make new friends with similar interests. It'll be easy to have fun and develop important life skills. It is recommended if you also haven't developed them too. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. Now, most bladers start young, but I do suggest that you take part in the fun too. Play improves the cognitive physical, social, and emotional well-being of children and young people. Through play, children learn about the world and themselves. That is how I got into it and have come to love the hobby, game, or sport as you can enroll yourself in tournaments. A sport can be a game, but a game is not necessarily a sport. Merely competing does not make something a sport. Oh, come on. Games and sports are similar. A game is a physical or mental activity or contest that has rules and that people do for pleasure. A sport is a contest or game in which people do certain physical activities according to a specific set of rules and compete against each other. The differences are subtle, but I still believe that Payblade can be considered a sport. We'll agree to disagree then. So I hope this video has given you an overview of Beyblading itself. Now, if you're a teenager who used to love Beyblading, or if you're just looking to understand this pastime a little bit better and the show itself, check out these videos I've made before on the lore of Beyblading. And I'll see you in the next video. And remember, be the best and be yourself.